July 1st, 2024, and I'm driving to the Dacia, and I am with my mother-in-law, Natalia. How are you? I'm okay. Hey, today is July 1st, and it's Canada's birthday. Were you aware of that? No, 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 not. No, okay. Well, it, do you know how old Canada is? Take a guess. How old? <laughs> Maybe. 200 and a half, 300 years. Oh maybe. no, 157 oh. years. <laughs> so Canada became a country in 1867. Ah, as an independent. Yeah, as an independent country from from Britain, ah. from the UK. And, but the interesting is, Khabarovsk, Russia is older <laughs> than Canada because Khabarovsk is uh, 165 yeah, years old. Yes. So, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> so, Natalia, here we are driving to the dacha. How long does it take us to get to the dacha usually? About 35, 40 minutes, I guess. Okay. So, it's a nice drive? Yeah. Okay. How often do you usually go to the dacha with us? Every three or four days, maybe. Maybe once a week. Of course, uh, winter time. Uh, winter time is an exception, but in the summer, every three or four days. Right, right. And uh, what's the best thing that you like about our dacha? <laughs> Scenery. I like trees. I'm amazed how tall they are, how beautiful they are. And of course the flowers. The flowers make me happy. Right on. Every time. So going back to uh, Canada and Canada's birthday today being July 1st, I got a question for you. Um, do Russian people actually know that July 1st is Canada's Independence Day? No, I don't think that many people know. They know uh, the US Independence Day, the 4th of July, some of them. Uh -huh. But as for Canada, I don't think many people know. What do Russians generally know about Canada? Canada is associated with hockey, of course. Hockey. All right. Yes. And, and beer. Uh, and uh, <laughs> beer. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't drink. Uh, uh, then hockey. Then uh, some uh, stars like Celine Dion, for example, a singer. Yeah, Celine Dion. Has a great yes voice. And uh, big cities like Toronto yeah. and Montreal and Ottawa. Ottawa is not that big, yeah, but this no. is the capital. Right? That's correct. Many people know that Ottawa is the capital. And I know many Russians, not many, but some of the Russians immigrated to Canada. Uh -huh. And they live in Toronto. And I know uh, that they work there and they are okay there. They find Canadians to be very friendly and very polite. Sometimes too polite, they say. Oh, too right, polite. yeah, that's our Achilles heel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Russian people have uh, many good friends in Canada, I know. So, Natalia, how long have you been living in Habarovsk? I've been living here since 1967, so for many years, many years. My father moved from the West and we stayed here for uh -huh. some time. Then my parents left the Far East and went to the west but I got married and uh, well since that time since 1973 uh -huh. I uh, I've been living as a <laughs> as a married woman right and what did you do for a living you're retired well, now right I am retired okay yes, but I I'm a graduate of the foreign languages department of the local university so I've been teaching English for the whole of my life so that's why your English is perfect <laughs> okay. well because people are always writing in the comments of the previous videos they're always asking why does your mother-in-law speak so well <laughs> this is my job this is your job uh, yes. so Natalia in your 50 plus years of living here in Habarovsk um, how many foreigners, uh, let's say Westerners, you know, from whether North America or Western Europe, have actually decided to move and set up roots here in Habarovsk? No, not many foreigners, of course. Foreigners uh, try to move to the western part of Russia, Moscow, St. Petersburg, since they are culturally very interesting for foreigners but some of the foreigners come and go some americans uh, and uh, of course from asian countries japanese chinese professors they were teaching at our university uh, for one year two years three years 
then they moved back to their homes. Uh, but some some got married to Russian oh. women, uh, and uh, this is how they come to live here. I know one of the professors of the technical university who been teaching English here for more than ten years. He is in America. He lives here in Havana. So speaking of uh, foreigners and stuff, I believe that uh, Habarovsk has sister cities around the world. Is that correct? Right, right. Habarovsk has several sister cities. Are any of them Canadian? Oh yeah, Victoria. Victoria, is, British uh, Columbia. Yeah, British Columbia is our sister city. Canada. Yeah. And some Canadians uh, from city administration came to Habarovsk. existence in the in the Russian Far East. But still even in the Soviet times uh, there were uh, tourists from yeah. Western countries from Great Britain and the USA and Japan and other country, countries and I being a student mm -hmm. was a guide to them. Therefore oh. I communicated with many many foreigners in the 70s yeah. uh, at the end of the end of 60s, the 60s, then the 70s, then the beginning of the 80s. Once I had a group of Australians, uh -huh. of 16 Australians, and we took a train, a Trans-Siberian train. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a long trip, and we, of course, uh, made friends with each other. So where did you travel from where to where? Well, uh, we flew from Khabarovsk to Irkutsk. Yeah. Then from Irkutsk by train to uh -huh. uh, Moscow. So that would have been around five days, four, yeah, four or five four days. Four and a half days. Yeah. Wow. But many, many travel seven days. Uh, well, have you traveled the whole length yes, of Russia on yes. the train? We came to the Far East by train in 1964. In 1964, seven days. Wow. Well, it was, of course, <laughs> very hot. It was in July, but unfortunately, there was no shower. In no the air conditioning. No air conditioning in our compartment. Therefore, well, we were very tired by the end of the trip. But now, from what I understand, and actually, we were on the train yeah, that uh, had couple, everything, right? a couple of months ago. We yeah. went to uh, Vladivostok. It was an right. overnight 12-hour train. And it has all the amenities, showers, air conditioned, yeah, yeah. restaurant, car, yeah, that, everything. Yeah, yeah. And there was an international train even from Khabarovsk to Vladivostok in the 70s. Only foreigners traveled oh, really? by this train. Yes, and in, in some of the uh, carriages, cars, mm -hmm. there, were, there, there were conditioning uh, conveniences and the shower, but the carriages were imported from Germany, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh -huh. They were old, very well uh, made cars. Speaking of foreign products, and uh, you mentioned about the trains being imported, or the carriages being imported from Germany. What about right now? Here we are in 2024. When you go shopping to the supermarkets and stuff, is it difficult to find foreign products on no, the store shelves? No, not far from it. Very easy. We see foods from every country of the world. Okay. Uh, yeah, bananas from Ecuador and uh, tomatoes from China and uh, 
uh, some other things from Indonesia and the Philippines and other countries. Okay, but what about like manufactured products? Okay, everybody knows, you know, Coca-Cola is in every corner of the world. Well, but what about stuff like uh, toothpaste, any foreign brands? Well, yeah, of course, of course. We have all kinds of uh, things from imported from other countries. Okay, well, you know what? We've almost arrived at the dacha here and my arm is getting sore. Anyways, let's uh, stop it here for now and uh, we'll start it up again once we get to the dacha. Thank you for the short interview, by the oh, way. Oh, you're welcome.